so quickly aldehydes and ketones um this is just some nomenclature uh you, this is um, pretty straightforward nomenclature here um if you have a um, cyclic aldehyde the aldehyde is your main functional group and so all of the rest of your uh substituents would be named based on the aldehyde being the parent functional group um, so here this is 2-amino 5-bromocyclohexanal you end the name in al uh, to indicate that the aldehyde is present um, and in this an, this example would be 3-chlorobutanal where al is the suffix on the parent name letting you know that an aldehyde is present so aldehydes and ketones do some really neat reactions um, one of the uh, more important reactions that they do is, is called what we call formation of either an acetal or a hemiacetal. If you take an aldehyde and react it with one equivalent of alcohol, then you form what's called a hemiacetal, where you see here the alde the um, alcohol, the oxygen from the alcohol attacks your carbonyl, and you end up with an, an alkoxy group attached to the carbonyl carbon and then the, the uh, pi bond breaking and you get an alcohol in the product and don't worry about the mechanism we will discuss the mechanisms in class alright uh, you can also form an acetal by taking the aldehyde and reacting it with two equivalents of alcohol and you see that both uh, alkoxy groups are here right and there's a loss of water which I don't have shown but water is your leaving group and we'll talk more about that in class um, key carbonyls can also be reduced down to alcohols with uh, hydride reducing agents like lithium aluminum hydride uh, other common sources are sodium borohydride uh, dibal and then sodium cyanoborohydride all of these do the same thing they are sources of uh, H- minus, which uh, the H- minus attacks your carbonyl and then upon uh, acidic workup you're able to retrieve the uh, or generate the alcohol probably the most important um, reaction that we're going to talk about with aldehydes and ketones is here the Wittig reaction it's a way to convert uh, aldehydes or ketones into um, alkenes right and these are your starting materials you need an aldehyde you need an, uh, an uh, alkyl halide triphenylphosphine and a strong base every Wittig reaction proceeds through what we call an illit that's this comp that's this molecule here uh, it has a negative charge and a plus charge adjacent to one another uh, this just happens to be a phosphonium illit because of the phosphorus atom um, but the way this works is you do SN2 substitution here to uh, displace bromine and then you form this uh, phosphonium ion here the base that we have here comes in and deprotonates carbon and puts the negative charge on carbon to give us our illit. So the illit is what reacts with um, the aldehyde here uh, in order to give you the alkene. This is a mechanism that we will definitely go over in class. All right, we've all you've all uh, seen this reaction already. This is a simple aldol reaction. Uh, if the um, reaction does not dehydrate then you end up with a beta hydroxy ketone if it does dehydrate then you end up with an uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone which is here and this is the same reaction that we've done in lab when we've made uh, chalcones in lab All right, this reaction is what we call Michael addition or conjugate addition it's where you have a alpha beta unsaturated um, carbonyl right this is the alpha position here at uh, number three this is beta at number four if you react a nucleophile with this in the presence of a catalyst then that nucleophile adds to the four position and we call this particular reaction a Michael addition and you can see the mechanism down here where the nucleophile attacks uh, the beta carbon the double bond gets shifted here and then the pi bond between carbon and oxygen breaks to give you this enol intermediate and then upon uh, protonation with, with acid, the uh, pi bond reforms between carbon and oxygen. 
and then the uh, pair of electrons here in the pi bond between carbon these two carbons picks up the proton and you have your Michael product over here the last set of reactions that we're going to look at are reactions of nitriles a nitrile is just a carbon uh, nitrogen triple bond um, these are pretty reactive and um, R can be any generic group you can convert that uh, nitrile into an imine or Schiff's base uh, by reacting it with a nucleophile uh, you can also reduce it which I'll show you on the next slide and uh, this is this uh, section down here just discusses the nomenclature of nitriles um, we won't focus a lot on the nomenclature I just want to give you an overview so um, the name for nitriles is obtained by adding nitrile to the name of the parent so this compound would be considered ethane nitrile because it's a uh, two carbon chain this will be propane nitrile because it's a three carbon chain and then this will be one two three four butane nitrile alright so if I react uh, my nitrile with um, sulfuric acid one with one equivalent of sulfuric acid I can generate the corresponding uh, amide which is shown here if I subject that to further hydrolysis by reacting it uh, with excess sulfuric acid in this case two equivalents I can take that nitrile and convert it to the carboxylic acid so, so nitriles are also are very good um, electrophiles uh, you can add a Grignard reagent to uh, this nitrile and then treat it with H uh, with at just acid after the reaction and you can convert that nitrile into a ketone uh, if you take that nitrile and, and react it with the Grignard reagent without uh, treating it with acid then you get an imine salt which is shown here alright so the nitrile can get converted into an imine if I react with um, if I react with a Grignard uh, with no acid if I react with a Grignard uh, and treat it with acid after the reaction then I can convert that nitrile into uh, a ketone and nitriles are also I can also reduce them down to amines uh, using lithium aluminum hydride LAH or I can reduce them down to amines by using just uh, standard uh, hydrogenation uh, techniques where I would take uh, hydrogen gas and palladium on carbon so again with these reactions I know we ran through them really quickly but what I would advise you to do is on each reaction just pause the video and create a flashcard for that reaction so that when um, when we go to talk about these reactions it's not just um, totally uh, foreign to you alright so if you have any questions feel free to email me and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them I'll see you in class on tomorrow